So we're going to have a quick look at the uh, controller lane in Logic and what it is capable of doing. Uh, got a little section here of some drums and piano. Okay, uh, so if I uh, double click and open up the piano roll, uh, oops. Usually, uh, by default, just get uh, the piano roll at the side, your notes, and the kind of edit window here. Uh, the controller lane, or the hyperdraw lane, as they call it in Logic, is uh, located down on the left-hand side. And uh, if you click on that, it brings up this. What I like to call a controller lane, um, as that's what it's called in a lot of other software. You can resize this window. Sometimes it appears to be really small at the bottom of your screen. If you uh, click with your mouse and drag up, you can extend the size of that and you can see what's going on. So the controller lane shows and displays loads of uh, MIDI controller information um, to do with the, uh, the notes that you've um, programmed and other bits of controller information to do with the, uh, the channel uh, that you're working on. So, um, by default, it usually shows you the velocities of individual notes, which is what we can see here. Um, a bunch of notes, you'll see it highlights the velocities, and you can click on them with your mouse and you can turn them up and down. Velocity is just being the kind of um, amplitude, I suppose, of your life volume of individual notes. And we can crank it right up full. Okay. That. Okay, so um, if you want to edit something else other than the volumes of uh, individual notes, the velocities, then you need to click on this arrow located at the side. Uh, it's a drop down menu and it offers you a whole range of uh, MIDI controllers. There's 128 MIDI controllers in total. Um, most of the time, you're not going to use uh, a majority of those, so it kind of gives you a list of the ones that are most commonly used. Uh, volume of the channel, for example. We click on that. Uh, MIDI controller number seven. Um, if we just draw in a quick kind of fade here, like that. And I'm just literally using the mouse tool to do that. Um, you can select your tools up here, your left click tool. Um, I have an arrow. Uh, you, you can do pretty much everything you need to do with the arrow. So just clicking and clicking a couple of anchor points, uh, dropping this point down, creating a fade, and you should see it automates the, uh, the channel fader over on the left hand side when you press play. Okay, uh, glad that worked. Okay, and uh, other options then we can have uh, things like uh, what they call panorama here, which is uh, panning. MIDI controller number 10. It's quite good to uh, try and learn some of the MIDI controller numbers off by heart. Um, it will be useful for you in the future and it helps with uh, editing MIDI. So just learn some of the basic ones. Panning, so again I'm just going to literally click, drag this line up here. Um, I'm going to pop in a couple of anchor points here. I'm just clicking with the mouse to do this and we'll have it panning all the way over from the uh, left to the right speaker and then going back centrally. Let's bring my uh, channel fader back up. We've got a bit of uh, panning going on there. Okay, um, there's other MIDI controller information. I mean, obviously, if you play with a sustain pedal um, plugged into your MIDI keyboard as you're playing, it will record that as controller information, which you can then go and edit uh, by clicking on the sustain pedal option. You may uh, not have a sustain pedal and may wish to sustain some of your notes. So, for example, sustain these first notes here so they're less kind of staccato. Then I can draw in. Um, 127 on this uh, on controller number 64, which is a sustain pedal. That basically means when it's 127, the sustain pedal is on. It doesn't give you any options to fade or anything like that. It's either on or off, so it's either a value of 0 or 127, uh, 0 being off. So if we do something like that, we should get a sustain note at the beginning, sustain chord. Sustain chord. 
want to sustain that last chord there. And it's continuing to sustain there, so I'll drop that sustain off at that point. Okay. Uh, so that's a sustain pedal. Um, some of the controllers that feature uh, in Logic you will not be able to use with um, with some of the uh, software instruments available in Logic. Um, some of them just don't respond to these generic uh, general MIDI controllers. So, for example, pitch bend, for example. Obviously, you can't really pitch bend a piano, so it won't respond to it if I put in a pitch bend here. Um, bending up and down. Obviously you're not hearing that pitch bend there. Now it's only with certain instruments. With some instruments they will respond to that particular controller of the pitch bend. So for example if I change my piano's patch to let's say a synthesizer patch, we choose like a lead I'll choose an analog lead synth. A synthesizer would tend to have a pitch bend wheel and you'll be able to pitch notes, so hopefully the, the pitch bend data here will, will work with this particular instrument. So let's try it. Okay, so you clearly heard the bend uh, happening there. Not particularly musical, but uh, just for demonstration purposes, it's just uh, showing you that some controllers work with some instruments and not with others, and that's sort of important to know if you're scratching your head going, why is that not working? Uh, that's the reason why. Obviously, uh, it's channel specific as well. You've got 16 channels in MIDI. Um, you can apply controller information to whichever channel you like. Um, deleting information once you put it in, uh, it's really easy to do. Um, if you've put in a load of stuff and you want to just quickly erase it, you can double click on the first anchor point. Um, of each section and it will uh, it will erase it. Uh, you can also um, use the uh, eraser tool to quickly uh, sweep through and, and erase uh, what you've done. Um, that and oops, there will be other options as well. So I'm sort of right clicking uh, the drop down menu here to choose between my different controllers I've put in. So I've done a bit of panning, um, I did a bit of pitch bend, but I've just erased that. So that's uh, a brief overview of the controller lane. If there is any uh, controller numbers that are not featured on the list that you get given here then if you choose the other option it will give you the full list of 128 um, including zero obviously 128 uh, MIDI controller numbers um, and you can choose to add those to the uh, to the list so if you choose one that isn't there like controller 24 for example, um, you click on it and it will uh, open it up for you. Um, once you draw some data in, okay, uh, it will, um, oh that's interesting, it will not appear there in the list, I thought that it would appear there in the list, but there we go. So uh, that's how you access it. If it's not there directly on the list, you've got to actually click on other and then choose and then uh, make your edit. Um, and that's it. That's the uh, quick overview of the uh, controller lane, how it can be used to add some articulation and phrasing to certain MIDI notes. And it's quite a powerful tool.